so we saw the warning against a hard heart a hard heart that is primary primarily caused through unbelief and um, uh, of course sin you know the deceitfulness of sin which can also lead to a hard heart now that's not the way to uh, journey with the lord we said that it's great to have a wonderful start and these people uh, the nation of israel had a great start but along the way they uh, did not persevere in their faith uh, and therefore the result or the con consequence also was terrible they never got to enter the promised land so in this passage hebrews 3 when he says my rest and then he says they did not enter his rest uh in the context we can say he's talking about the land of canaan where these people did not enter uh but for us there is the spiritual understanding of uh, what is being talked of here and that is the fulfillment of god's promises okay it may need not be a land or anything but the fulfillment of uh, what god is speaking to us so the spiritual israel who is the spiritual israel it's us the church and there are many promises over our lives uh, in fact i heard a sermon by a very famous preacher when i was trying to understand you know what is this uh, uh, reaching the promised land uh, and stepping into the promised land so he preached a sermon about uh, the baptism in the holy spirit and how that is the canaan uh, you know that that is being spoken of so there are many many promises in god's word we can't just talk of one promise there are many promises uh, and uh, our our desire should be going after those promises you know one beautiful thing that we uh, learn is about uh, john the baptist and at that time when jesus was talking about john the baptist he said you know the kingdom of god suffers violence and the violent shall take it by force so there is go there is going to be an initiative from our sides to take what god has you know promised to us yes kingdom is there but who is going to experience the kingdom the people who have uh, that grit or that perseverance to say yes the promises are there i'm going to go after it i'm going to take it okay uh, so that would be the spiritual interpretation of uh, the fulfillment of god's promises here or in other words enter the rest of god but there is more regarding the rest of god in the subsequent uh, uh, sections so we will we will go ahead and see what that has to tell us for that uh, is there a question uh, i thought i heard okay divya has posted uh, a question here the passage implies that unbelief is a sin yes yes divya unbelief in itself is a sin okay uh, sure sure pastor so if uh, i'm not sure if we can interpret it this way um, if you think about how the israelites were um uh, had the promise of entering the promised land um and if we think about us as believers we have the promise of eternal life uh, that god has promised and um the unbelief because of the unbelief the israelites had they were not able to enter right uh, the promised land so even for a believer uh, like the unbelief in the sense um, not believing uh that god can provide eternal life right uh, not believing that um uh keeping my tr putting my trust in jesus as lord and savior um can pro provide eternal life if i take into that you know uh, just comparing the promised land with eternal life uh is it okay like to extra extrapolate it like that the, uh, so uh, so it is is it like the unbelief in um 
um, Jesus Christ as the way to salvation uh, can lead me into, you know, of not entering that rest or not entering the promise of eternal life. Is that right to say? Uh, yes, Divya, it is right to say. Um, even for a believer, because here we are talking about a believer who has inherited. He already said partakers of the you know heavenly calling. So we we are we have a part in it. We have an inheritance. We have eternal life. But a believer in a in a uh, see in a progressive way, you can look at it this way. We have all the promises of God, promises of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, then, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit and many other promises to experience God's provision, to experience God's deliverance, healing. Now, unbelief could be at the level where I'm experiencing a few things, but I'm not experiencing other things. So it can be at that level. Uh, and it could get more where, you know, I'm experiencing not experiencing most of what God has promised. So I'm a believer, but I don't see fulfillment of God's promises in my life because I'm, I have come to a place of unbelief. Now, if you take it to the highest level of unbelief, uh, then yes, there is that danger of not believing in the, um, you know, the eternal life and uh, uh, the afterlife in heaven, whatever God has already done on the cross and given us, we can even forego that. So that is the extreme danger. And uh, in fact, as we journey along, Hebrews chapter 6 is going to talk about it, uh, about how somebody who has uh, an incredible unbelief, like they've tasted God as a believer, they've experienced everything, but they let go. They can even uh, miss heaven okay it sounds terrible uh, and it's very difficult for us to accept that but the bible says there is a danger okay does that answer your question divya yes yes i was uh, uh, i uh, was looking at that um, point yeah that you just mentioned yes, yes yeah yeah yes yeah. thank you thank you sure no problem so, uh, yes, there are all these uh, uh, challenges. Yes, Christopher. Uh, yes, Pastor. I just wanted to add that, um, or something that I was just thinking through, is that, um, you know, when um, uh, this whole group of people did not enter the uh, promised land, um, I'm just thinking, uh, thinking that there may have been some who actually, um, um, you know, did not harden their hearts. And, but as a group, uh, you know, uh, they were uh, they were punished uh, because there were some, or there were a majority, or there was there was the, at least the leaders were did not harden their hearts. Oh, sorry, the leaders hardened their hearts. So I'm I'm just thinking that um, in in a in a in a sort of a present day scenario, um, if there are if there are a group of of people who are, uh, uh, say, for example, belong to a church, and um, they um, there are some in that in that community who who are hardened their hearts because the leaders themselves have hardened their hearts, and um, some have not, and they you know, they choose to uh, maybe even walk away from the church or they you know they. Uh, they still remain there for some time at least. So I'm just thinking that will that punishment be, will be, uh, will it, could it be uh, applied across the entire group or will it be done individually? Uh, so the answer is individually, Christopher. See, because even in this case, as you rightly pointed out, uh, that old generation did not go, but you had the younger generation. Okay, and also uh, leaders like Caleb and Joshua, who had a different spirit, uh, you know, the Bible talks about it. So they, because they were different, they all entered. But the ones who were so-called rebellious and stiff-necked did not enter. Same thing applies even today. So God will look at our hearts 
and he knows best you know how to evaluate right so i i, I guess that you know there is there's such a big um, responsibility and, and onus that is placed upon uh, on leaders who are um, you know who who need to ensure that you know that they are uh, uh, you know ministering uh, you know uh, in a in a in a very uh, uh, authentic way and you know something that is pleasing to God uh, because they could possibly influence you know their their uh, their community and you know, the people who who uh, who are uh, sort of um, you know who who are under them you know so just just a point to note here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Christopher, for that, uh, you know, wonderful reminder. It's not just a point. It's a very, very crucial point. And uh, all of us uh, here doing this course, the reason we are doing it is so that uh, we can minister through our lives. So all of us ministers of God, uh, it's, it's important for us to make a note of this point because the way we influence people, it should lead to faith and not unbelief and uh, we are accountable we are responsible um, and, and you know may the lord give us grace to do uh, things right um, so that uh, you know we can we can lead a generation into a, a faith filled life but one one more thing i want to say there uh, christopher is we can do our best okay everything we know uh, to do we we do that uh, but at the end of the day uh, there's also like individual responsibility so sometimes unfortunately people don't respond even when uh, leaders may do their best so when such things happen uh, it, you know we can't hold ourselves responsible or whoever's leading uh, you know that there's only that much even a leader can do and then finally, it comes to the individuals who are making their choices. Uh, we can suggest, we can, you know, speak wisdom, speak faith into people's lives. But ultimately, if they make uh, the, you know, whatever choice they want to, and it's not godly, the consequences will follow. So that's just a like a follow up point there. I hope it's okay. <laughs> or uh, is there yes, any thank contention? Thank okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so a uh, uh, very uh, wonderful passage here from Hebrews where we are learning about God's rest and how unbelief keeps us out of it. So coming to chapter 4, uh, this is uh, primarily a chapter of uh, exhortation um, and exhortation to remain in the faith. So that is that, that has already been the theme all along. Uh, but this whole chapter has that hey continue in the faith continue in the faith you know he's he's saying the same thing so chapter 4 verse 1 uh, through 7 uh, if someone can read it we will go ahead and uh, talk about each verse shall i read ma'am yes yes Samni. chapter hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place for the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. <coughs> Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after, a, after such a long time, as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Agni, for uh, reading that passage. Uh, we see that uh, the writer is repeatedly saying the same thing. Uh, and one inference that we can make, and uh, you know, we were discussing here uh, uh, yeah, during the break time, is that the listeners or the believers during that time must have really become hard in their hearts, uh, which he wanted to address. And that's why he's, he's uh, trying to tell them in so many different ways and make the same point that don't harden your heart. So there is a repetition of that. So verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 4, uh, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest. So you see, therefore, many, many sections begin with therefore. So he's continuing based on what he has already said uh, uh, in this section as well. Uh, so the idea is carried on without a pause. That's what it means when there's a therefore. Uh, he says, since a promise remains of entering his rest. So there is that promise for those believers. Those believers uh, during that time, uh, the hard situation that they were going through, they could experience the goodness of God in the midst of those situations, circumstances, the fulfillment of God's promises. And also, you know, we said we are the spiritual church. So they are the spiritual church. So we know that Rest also would would mean things like uh, having peace with God. That doesn't come easy. If there is somebody who's not born again, uh, their experience of life is very different from those of us who are born again. And we know that Jesus has paid the price for our sins. We now have a relationship with God. We have peace with God. Rest is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, freedom from a, a, a spirit which is which is servant like because now how do we how do we uh, relate with god we have more of uh, i am a child of god attitude and it's so much easier for us to approach god to talk to him to share with him uh, so that is also rest Imagine if we didn't have that privilege. You know, how beautifully uh, the writer said that you can enter the presence of God uh, boldly. So that is rest because uh, if this rest was not given, we would be striving, we would be struggling to enter into God's presence. But now we have this promise of entering into uh, God's presence. That is rest. Uh, we have rest in the sense of uh, we no longer have to observe all the laws that Moses gave. Imagine if God said, okay, you have to continue that also. We all would have needed, you know, temples and sacrifices and daily offerings. Uh, but that life would be so hard uh, as compared to the kind of life we now live with spiritual sacrifices and, you know, our devotion towards God. So there is rest. When we are a believer, there is rest already because of what Jesus has done. Already, you know, all these promises await us uh, where, where we can experience peace with God, uh, a relationship like a child, deliverance from observation of these laws and rituals and practices, traditions. Um, we also have freedom of worship. Isn't it? Uh, Jesus said uh, when that woman at the well, Samaria, she asked, oh, where should the people worship? Uh, which is the right place to worship Jesus? He said, hey, it's not about, you know, this mountain, that mountain. Uh, you worship like this, worship like that. No, but those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So there's incredible freedom. The kind of worship that we offer to God today because of what Jesus has done, we enjoy freedom. That is rest. There's no longer, you know, a striving where we want to uh, we, we want to demonstrate something or prove something to God. All of this is rest. And God is, in fact, um, you know, later on you have references to on the seventh day he rested. So that we can say that that Sabbath rest, okay, we also call it God's rest, God's rest, my rest. You know, uh, Jesus, uh, God said here. So that Sabbath rest, something about that Sabbath rest, the kind of rest that God took 
in which uh, there was no striving, there was peace, there was calm. We have that promise. We can experience that kind of rest. That's why he's saying, I'm inviting you. There is the promise of this kind of rest. Uh, but you know, we have to walk into it. It's not going to fall on us. That is for sure. Even the people of Israel, you know, God could have just dragged them and thrown them into the promised land and said, oh, enjoy, enjoy the, the fruit, enjoy the, you know, uh, milk and honey. But as we've been saying, we are co-laborers with God. God put us here on the earth. And uh, we know Psalm 115 verse 16 says, the earth is, uh, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth belongs to us. So there is a part we have to play and there is an initiative we have to take so it is kept for us you know something is there it's already there but if we don't take it it's not going to be us so that's how it works uh, as far as the the promises of god are concerned even the rest of god enter my rest so the onus is on us the initiative is ours so that's how god is uh, you know calling us to that and he's saying there is a promise of entering uh, his rest or God's kind of rest, uh, let us fear lest any of us seem to have come short of it. Or in other words, don't miss it. It's available. Okay, moving on. Verse 2. Uh, I'm reminded of what Christopher said, uh, uh, you know, from verse 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So everyone can experience or listen to the same truth. Now, some might say, how did you, how can he say that gospel was preached? Jesus came later. These people who walked in the wilderness, they didn't know about Jesus. But here is, you know, God's goodness and his justice that in all the uh, the laws, everything that was prescribed to these Israelites, there were these shadows that were talking or pointing towards Jesus. You know, and there are ample uh, messianic prophecies. There were prophets who, who spoke about the one to come, you know, the Lord Jesus, indicating that, yes, you're doing all these things, but he's going to come. And, you know, he is the fulfillment of the promise. So uh, in that sense, he's saying the gospel was preached, okay, uh, to us as, uh, as well as to them. So they had an idea. They should have had an idea about what God is up to. But having heard the, the gospel or the word of God is not everything, not, not enough. What is the next step required on the part of a believer? He specifies it here. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard them. So when we hear the word of God, we need to have a heart of faith. See, we can listen to God's word uh, thinking, mm, ah, interesting. Yeah, this sounds very interesting. This is very informative. Uh, or um, this, this is answering questions. Uh, this is enjoyable. You know, all, all of this is fine as long as that word, you know, I, I also recognize I am not listening to something which is, um, you know, like a natural entity, but Logos, the word of God, God himself, you know, uh, the living God, we, we talked about, you know, the power of that God, uh, the power of his word. This is something that will work in my life. Uh, this has the power to transform me. This has the power to equip me, give me the wisdom I need. So you're looking at it, you know, for all that it is, that it is as what God's word says, and you mix it with faith. Then what does this scripture say? It says, prophet. When we hear the word for what it really is, and we mix it with faith, we'll see a result or results. You know, different results that I said, personal transformation, breakthrough, uh, 
you know operating at a at a uh, greater level uh, in in many things like the gifts of the spirit ministry uh, you know so many things happen because how how are we consuming the word that's the faith aspect we're not just like intellectually taking in things so that we can uh, reproduce it you know at another point in time but it's affecting my life it's going to affect the world around me um, this is god's word you know, on sundays we do that declaration this is god's word this is god speaking to me because that is what faith says that uh, we are hearing this gospel we are hearing the word we mix it with faith and then it benefits it profits uh, sometimes you know it's possible that the gospel is preached to everyone or the word is preached to everyone but over time you would notice that some people have moved to greater heights in their faith in their walk with the lord whereas some others they have not moved from the place where they started it's very unfortunate how do you think this could have happened one of the answers is faith those who mix it with faith will see the benefit of it but those who don't it it's not going to benefit uh, you know them much except in a natural way so uh, the author is specifying the importance of faith in our journey verse 3 for we who have believed do enter that rest so now i think we have an idea what rest we are talking about uh, we do enter that rest as he has said so i swore in my wrath um, they shall not enter my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world what what is he talking about see he's just talking about when we believe we can experience this rest that we have received through jesus christ okay and he says the works were finished from the foundation of the world what is that see it is like saying there is another uh, scripture it says the lamb of god was slain uh, at the foundation of the world the lamb of god was slain so when god created the world at that very point it's saying who is the lamb of god jesus jesus is sacrifice you know it came into the picture the lamb of god was slain you know, before the foundations of the world so in god's mind works were finished from the foundation of the world works were finished before the foundation you know lamb of god was slain before the foundation so in a way in god's mind his plans you know the works that he is going to do it's all ready blueprint is ready that's what it means so how do the works get finished from the foundation of the world it first starts with god's mind so he has he knows what is doing everything is ready plan is ready blueprint is ready then he goes ahead and does it so that's how we see you know these passages that say that you know already it was done uh, from finished from the foundation of the world because in god's mind it was a done deal then verse 4 for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way so the sabbath rest right the way this is verse 4 and 5 is referring to the god kind of rest what he experienced and god rested on the seventh day from all his works and again in this place they shall not enter my rest so sabbath rest in a spiritual sense we know you know the works of jesus uh, when we believe once we become believers in a way we are entering that rest and as we continue in our faith we will experience you know many aspects of that god kind of rest and it's not because of our works but it's because of the grace of, of uh, god on our lives all that but now i also want to just quickly uh, talk ask the question you know entering the rest uh seventh day rest what about physical rest you know for believers and those of us who are in ministry uh yeah any thoughts about natural rest how should how does that work how should that work 
uh, Pastor? Yes, uh, yes, I see. So I think for physical rest, I don't think God exempts any of us as believers um, to deny our bodies from physical rest. Um, God has, in his wisdom, designed our body to work and at the same time take adequate rest to continue. So uh, physical, re uh, physical rest should never be exempted from the life of a believer. Um, if we wear out the body, the spirit can no longer fun live inside it because the body wears out. And the only way the spirit can find f expression for whatever God wants us to do is when the body is healthy. So abuse to the body, I mean, that means neglecting rest or denying the body rest can be detrimental to us. So God in Hello? his wisdom. Hello. Sorry. Abini? Abini? I'm sorry. And uh, by mistake, it happened. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I, um, God wants us to rest and when we need when our body needs needs it and it, it should be part of our lifestyle to rest. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Say. So just a side note on our uh, you know physical rest as well. It's very important. Um, as uh, Say said that uh, our body is that instrument, if you will, that we need when we are uh, living here on the earth and you know we are doing the works that God has called us to do even to do our ministry we need this body isn't it uh, so we have to take care of it uh, Divya mentions words like refueling recharging ourselves in God yes that's important Kennedy rejuvenate uh, and help deal with burnout yes very important so um, especially when you know you talk about uh, ministry, we talk about ministry. Um, you know, it it can happen that ministers of God can push themselves beyond uh, sometimes what they can handle, uh, and the result, the term that Kennedy used here, burnout. Uh, and we should watch out for burnout because uh, see, there's the balance that needs to be struck as far as our uh, uh, you know like spiritual things yes we we are going after those things but at the same time uh, in the natural sense we have to also see you know, what is my body saying what about health what about uh, uh, you know sometimes rest also has to do with emotional rest uh, and and for that we need some uh, work life balance family uh, you know, how are things going in my family? So many things around us, things that are connected to us, my relation, how are my relationships? So all these things matter for us to experience rest in its full fullest uh, sense. And so we cannot, uh, we cannot only uh, talk about, you know, spiritual rest, spiritual rest, and then neglect these other aspects. So it's important to make time, uh, you know, to take care of your body which might mean you know you you eat healthy you get enough sleep you have some exercise as part of your daily routine uh, and other things you know if you say family and relationships then taking time for for your loved ones spending time with them building those relationships so then what happens is a there's a balance but whenever we go off balance this rest no that we're talking about it can it can be very uh, difficult to experience uh, sometimes people uh, may want to take off a, a part of uh, you know some days in a year they set aside okay i'm going to take whatever one week in this month one week in that month i'll just uh, pray and also rest my body so they may want to do it that way some others may have a different uh, you know pattern of of taking time off physically um, uh, whichever way whatever suits people we can do it that way but uh, another very important thing is um, this is something that i i personally uh, believe in uh, you know day to day day to day um, uh, activities when we are engaged especially in the ministry what happens is that tiredness can set in because it's very demanding 
you're stepping into you know this role and the next moment you're in another role and you're putting so many hats so it's like it can be exhausting but uh, the important thing is intimacy with god if you uh, recall during the christian leaders conference we talked about how a place of satisfaction a place of completeness it has to come from the presence of god so practicing that uh, daily devotion with god is a great stress buster uh, you know it it just you in, in almost immediately you enter into that rest and you work from that place of rest and it makes things so much easier uh, and not just that in addition to it i've heard you know many ministers of god say this they pray a lot in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit personally okay pray in the spirit whenever you have opportunity through the day pray in the spirit what happens we know that uh, you know um, i think it's a book of isaiah it it says it's like refreshing it brings refreshing so for our spirit man uh sorry if i it sounds very uh, you know simplified but it's like a spa experience in in some way okay where you're rejuvenated you're refreshed in your spirit when you spend time uh just praying in the spirit so that is another very important thing that we can make you know a part of our lives so then what happens yes we are doing ministry we are getting busy with this and that but we don't have to burn out you know god will also give us that uh, wisdom to make the choices so that we can prioritize uh, and so we can do ministry in a refreshed way in a joyful way and don't really have to go off balance so i i just thought you know as a side note it, this is a good thing to uh, chat about uh, okay so I won't go too long on this. Uh, Kung, you're waiting to say something. Please go ahead. Mm. Okay, so first I have a question and a comment. Uh, like, so in the Bible, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, God told the Israelites also to, uh, for the land to rest it for one year, right? Okay, so like, uh, Based on that, I'm just uh, saying about the physical rest, like how important it is Like if God uh, wants the land to take rest for even one year, like how much more important for us to uh, take uh, physical rest also. And like, uh, even like, um, I mean, I read a lot of like uh, this missionary stories from YWAM books and like at the very beginning, like some of them, uh, they work too hard, like, uh, doing things for the Lord and their body couldn't handle that uh, harsh climate in whichever place that they're serving in. And uh, some even died because of that, because they didn't take uh, rest. And so, yeah, that was my comment on the physical uh, rest thing. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, so Kung's uh, question was about the land that God says, okay, let the land rest and then you break the fallow ground and all that, no, something. So, yeah, that, that's true. And uh, does it happen today? I don't know too much about agriculture, but uh, it seems to me like, you know, it's, it's a way of nourishing, having the land um, gain, regain its nutrients before you plant things okay okay uh so i'm not able to hear you because i have this thing on <laughs> yeah maybe you can just speak into um so like uh, i'm asking the israelites were not uh following that thing where God says you work for six years and the seventh year you give the land the rest. And uh, they weren't uh, following that. And that's when, uh, I mean, my question is like, uh, when they went, uh, when the enemies, uh, like the Babylons and the uh, other empires that uh, conquered them, it gave them rest. Uh, it gave the land the rest. and. Uh, for seven years or something like that requested. Okay, I don't know if we... And we, uh, 
Uh, we studied it, I kind of forgot the, in the end times, like uh, we're studying in Daniel and uh, also uh, like how uh, when we're doing eschatology, like uh, because uh, the Israelites did not um, give the land rest and didn't obey God and followed any of his commandments like that. Uh, I think it was something like that. Added. Okay, sure. So, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So I, I think it's more of like a, like a comment, right? Not so much a question. Okay, all right. So, uh, yeah. So it, there was something like that in the laws that that God gave, um, and we understand why you know God could have said that. It's just to kind of replenish the the nutrients. Um, so I'm quickly looking at the comments here, uh, and then I'll go to Divya's question. Um, in terms of physical rest, how can a person help himself if it is very demanding time? Of their life. So, as I shared, Divya, uh, it begins in the presence of God. It begins uh, by taking time with God. You, you see God, and uh, the psalmist says, I will pour out my heart. So, that's a privilege we have. Many times, when we just pour out our heart, you experience the peace of God. You know how Philippians chapter 4 says, It says, Make all your requests known with thanksgiving and the peace of God that transcends all understanding. It'll fill our hearts. So, uh, it begins there. We can start receiving God's peace from there. And I'm sure God will give us the wisdom to order our um, lives in, in such a way, prioritize where. Yes, there will be some things we'll have to give up uh, and some things we'll have to pursue because there's only so much we can all do. We are all, you know, limited in that sense. So uh, I hope uh, that helps. Um, Kendi says to help check emotional quotient. Okay, even you know, emotional rest, that's important. Uh, then coming to, okay, Siddhant has given us the reference of that passage that talks about rest and refreshing through speaking in tongues it's isaiah 28 and verse 12. okay um, i think it's not the primary verse maybe 11 is the primary verse but this is a, a follow-up uh, so thank you Siddhant, for sharing that and avni says uh, discipline is the key uh definitely you know without discipline we cannot keep anything sustainable uh, so thank you everyone for your views. Uh, Divya, finally turn your turn. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just uh, was uh, thinking about the seventh day rest that God uh, God took. Uh, so is it like a model for us to replicate in our lives, or or did God really needed that rest, like the seventh day rest? I'm trying to understand why He took the seventh day rest hmm. Hmm. so i mean i have asked this question to myself many times the second part that god wanted this as a model for us that's true but does it need the rest i i mean we know god is omnipotent uh, and uh, we have passages in the Bible which say that uh, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He doesn't grow weary, uh, you know. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think he needs it to refresh himself. Uh, but why did he choose it? That's a question. Yeah, that's a question. Uh, say, did, uh, yeah, Divya, you want to say something? Yeah, just out of curiosity. Yeah, that's uh, nothing... Uh, like I need an answer, but just out of curiosity, I asked that. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, Shri Kumar has a good answer. So I'll come to you, Say. So he okay. says uh, he rested from creation. That makes sense. That makes sense. So maybe uh, it, it is like him um, indicating that this task is done. So creation, it's over, rest. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I was, I was just going to say the same thing as Amber Christopher says that the Hebrew word, if we go check it, it's actually saying that he seized from his works. 
from the works of creation. So it's not like he slumbered, just like he said. He doesn't, neither sleeps or slumbers. It was just the Hebrew word, which was translated in English as rest, but it's actually that he seized from the creation of uh, works of creation. Yes. Wow, thank you, Say. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Christopher is saying the same thing. Um, rest from what he had done over the last six days. So seized from uh, that activity. And that is talking about rest. We have two more minutes to go. Uh, so Charles, uh, he says, because Jesus was crucified at the foundation of the world, is it the reason why in uh, New Testament he said he rose again for he had risen? just asking uh so which reference is this uh, charles if you don't mind if you could uh, post that that would be helpful in the meantime i will uh, ask mangi to uh, state his point mangi please go ahead yeah thank you pastor uh, uh god god resting on the seventh day does it not say in Genesis that he once everything was done it was done with everything, and he saw that it was good. That's when he rested. So he didn't rest because it was the seventh, seventh day. He rested because it was he was, he was done with, uh, with his work. It, it is the same, the same rest we found in Jesus because all the work is done already. That's why uh, we can rest in him because he has done all the work. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mangi. So Mangi is, uh, you know, uh, in agreement with the Say and Christopher. So he rested. It what he's saying is not so much about the seventh day, uh, and uh, that the work was over, and th thereby God chose to rest. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Mangi. Charles, uh, any updates from you? Okay, uh, so he shared First Corinthians fifteen four. Thank you for this, uh, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, uh, Charles, see, he rose again. That's fine, uh, but he he was crucified at the foundation of the world. The Lamb of God was slain at the foundation of the world. There's a scripture. I think it's in Revelation. Um, he rose again. It, it's uh, so even though it doesn't state that at the foundation of the world he rose again, that's our understanding because we know that whatever Jesus was going to do was in the mind of God. It's as simple as that. That's the essence of what that uh, scripture or that passage is saying. Okay, so I hope uh, that that is helpful. Um, if there is anything more to that, please do post it on the stream page and uh, you know we can pick it up from there. Uh, let's close today's class. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it was a really good discussion. Uh, would anyone like to lead in prayer, please? Yes. Charles. Yes, Charles. Yes, yes please Charles. go ahead. Yes, please yes, go ahead. Pray. Father God, we thank you so much for you are uh, a God that knows us. You understand the ending from the beginning. You have no plan B. You knew this, that we would be here learning your word. So we thank you for our teacher. We thank you because you are speaking through her to us. And that, Lord, as we part, Lord, that you will part us with a blessing and that we will be able to meet again and continue to study your word. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So have a, a restful weekend, everyone. Experience uh, the God kind of rest. And we will meet once again next Friday. And let's continue to learn from this book. God bless you. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.